another week at M Engineering South Florida. Special shout out to Kyle. Thanks for letting us borrow your car this week. Now, I'm here with John Gatos over at Seoul. What, what are we doing to this thing? Well, there's a lot of questions out there of what kind of power you can squeeze out of the four liter mm -hmm. platform. Obviously, we have a GT4 here, so it's not as much low hanging fruit as the GTS 4.0, which is detuned about 20 horsepower compared to this car. Mm -hmm but it's very popular to do modifications to these cars. What does what and why? It's very popular to start off with over axle pipes on this car, so we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna see what software does. Then we're gonna start to add some of the low hanging fruit of let's chase some more power out of a header change and see what that does on top of OAPs. And then what we can squeeze out of this car mm -hmm. from a full exhaust and software upgrade package. Well, I'm looking forward to this, so why don't we just go ahead and just let's get it on the dyno and see what it does. So we got the 718 GT4 loaded up on the dyno. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some baseline runs on this car in a bone stock configuration. We're not gonna add any power to the car. However, we are going to install Imcoder to the GT4. Now, Imcoder is a unique product that M Engineering offers. It allows us to apply some of our custom features to the car without adding any power to it. It also allows us to use MTuner for things like data logging and to put the car in dyno mode. So in this example, Imcoder is being installed to the car as a stage zero flash. So no power is being added to the car, but we're adding some of our custom features. So for example, we've removed the auto start stop and we've also installed our PSE valve mod. So when you push the exhaust valve button, the valves open all the way up.
So now we're here at the bench. Why don't we look at some numbers? Charles, can you open up the stock numbers for the GT4? Yeah, please? absolutely. So here it is right here. So this is this is the baseline stock run of this car. So okay. this is our encoder stage zero software with a couple features added, stock power band otherwise, and this is full stock exhaust, right, John? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's full stock exhaust. So 355 horsepower at the tire. Yep. What's the first thing that we do? Well, there's two different ways that people go about modifying these cars for some more power. Some people don't want to do any exhaust at all. They're very happy with it. You know, that might not be the goal. So you could do just software. Okay. Or if you are getting into the exhaust side of things, most people know at this point the best return on investment for more sound out of the four liter platform is doing over axle pipes. Okay. So we can look at just software. We can look at yeah. just over axle pipes as a first stage modification. Yeah, so I'm gonna pull it up here. So we take a look at this run. Um, the red line represents the same exact configuration exhaust wise. So it's a bone stock exhaust, but it has the software added on top of it. You see all the gains yeah. and it's through entire rev range. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Whole power and what, what did we make on this run here? 384.9? Uh, 384 .9. versus 355. So it picked up mm -hmm. roughly around 30 wheel. 30 wheel yep. on a non-turboed car. Right, that's about 10% power gain mm -hmm. across the entire yep. rev band. Now that we've seen the tune, I mean, normally, or at least for me in the 4RS, the first thing I did is I threw on some over axle pipes. So yep. yeah. why don't we see the difference that just over axle pipes make on the 718 GT4? Here we go. So that's what the yellow line here is. Okay. Our dynograph. So 372.8 horsepower. The OAPs are on this particular car more of an overall power curve okay. modification. From the moment you get on it all the way to redline, unlike the 4RS where you have a more of a narrow window of a big lump gain mm -hmm. in the mid-range between four to six, this is everywhere. And this is kind of the basic foundation that you work off of on the exhaust side of things as first sound modification, first performance modification. You're getting rid of the big cork uh, of the factory OAPs. Uh, gives you more overall sound level when the valves are in the open condition. And this particular configuration was resonated OAPs, which also lends very nicely towards adding headers into the equation as the next performance modification while keeping the tone quality smooth, refined, and a little bit more manageable from an overall sound level perspective when you're really beating on the car. So here, we're gonna drastically improve the sound, make more power across the rev band. And it's the first mod I would do, honestly, if I bought this car, and it's the first one I did in my RS. So now we've got the over axle pipes in place, we've seen the tune. What do people normally do after they've got the OAPs, or what's the next logical thing to make more power? To make more power, the next logical thing is to play with the headers on these cars. As okay. we've seen on the four liter platform over the years, the muffler replacements aren't where the power is, unlike the GT4 RS, where it goes from a three inch primary flow path and next down to two and a quarter. That's a big speed bump on the 4RS. The standard four liter car is the factory exhaust system is about two and a quarter okay. at the connection flanges going through the OAPs, going through the muffler. And that's not a big, you know, restriction point to change the muffler on. Okay. So the logical thing to do is to go after a header change and that will increase performance further. If you're looking for a character and tone quality change, that's where you go after the muffler side of things. So next up for a performance return on investment would be adding headers, and we can look at the sport headers uh, on this as the next stage up from there. So the yep. white line is gonna be adding on those sport headers uh, mm -hmm. versus the resonated OEPs. Yeah. Exactly. So if you have what the most popular upgrade is right from the start of over axle pipes and you add sport headers into the equation on top of that, what should your realistic expectation be for additional performance? And this is what we're showing here. You know, anywhere from 4,000 to redline, you're seeing some very tangible performance numbers. You're getting a nice little lump right in that mid range before between four to five, and then you're carrying a nice solid five to 10 throughout the rest of the curve. Why is this so, why is it not smooth? There's two reasons we're seeing this on here. Um, some of it has to do with the smoothing of the dyno, but mm -hmm. these cars from the factory on a stock tune at wide open throttle run a lambda target of close to one. So it's actually running a really, really lean condition. So Porsche does a whole bunch of stuff in here for emissions, and as a result, the power band through that you know, range can look a little goofy. So with some tuning, 
with some correct fueling targets, uh, that can get smoothed out quite a okay. bit. Yep. See how much flatter yep. wow. that torque curve is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. And you can see it as you start to get make more and more power, you know, it, this becomes more and more amplified out of just the, the exhaust changes before you start to bring the software into uh, the equation. So you can see the car's just like, it wants to make more power, wants to make more power, wants to make more power, and it's just like, uh, 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 the software is just mm -hmm. beating it back down again, the stock software. So as soon as these lovely guys get involved, all of a sudden it smooths that all out, and then you get that big cumulative gain of everything working together appropriately, and everything becomes a whole lot smoother. For the more track-oriented competition guys, you know, here we are adding competition headers on top of over-axle pipes. There is your best return on investment for power. And that leads into, okay, so well, now we've gotten most of the return on investment out of the exhaust, out of the way, now what can we do? What does it look like to bring the software into the equation on, let's just say, a, a full race exhaust package on a car where you've replaced everything you can, you've gone as lightweight as possible, you've gone with the OAPs, you've gone with the header, you ditched the muffler for the weight. All right, now what? Let's tune this car and see what it can really do. Oh, wow. So there it is. Yep, so this is our, um, this is our stage two calibration uh, on pump gas. So this matches, the calibration matches the hard parts applied yep. to this vehicle. So it's a combination of changes to the ignition timing, lambda targets, uh, there's a little bit of throttle control here and there. Uh, you can see this drop off in the torque and power at the very top of uh, where Redline is. We bumped the Redline up 200 RPMs. And if you throw the stock file back up on there. Yeah, I want to see the run. stock file. So, yeah, yeah that's that. ridiculous. Move and that is your, that's your big delta. What's yep. that, like 60 some wheel? Yep. Yeah. And what, like 30, 30 torque? Yep. Yeah. That's ridiculous. This is, this is, this is real, this is realistic. So if yeah. you guys want a much more cost-effective 4RS, I mean, you did it with just an exhaust and some software. This varies a lot depending on the configuration that you go, valve, non-valved, you know, uh, sport versus competition. I would say that a, an investment like this, you'd be looking at maybe 10 grand, 12 wow. on the high side. You're picking up a... Uh, <laughs> What? 60 wheels, no laughing matter. <laughs> that what? is no laughing matter. Actually aspirated car. What's it, what's it rev to? 8,200? 82, yep. Uh, so almost yep. nine. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen the, the dynos and we've talked about the numbers. Let's go for a drive and see how the car feels. seeing you again too. All right, so you've had the exhaust and the tune on your car now for about two months. Yes. Let's talk about your impressions. How do you like it? Um, dude, I'm blown away, man. I noticed it immediately from second to third gear, yep. third to fourth, and even downshifting. It's just incredibly noticeable. The sound is intoxicating. Nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. You just hear this massive wave of just sound behind you, uh -huh. and the car just squats and just goes. Through the whole rev range. Yes. Yeah. And so yes. what uh, configuration did you settle on? Maybe we can remind the viewers. What uh, so shows. I wanted something that was equally closest to the RSR. Yep. Because I grew up loving the RSRs from the yep. 997 to the 991. I believe it's the 
see uh, extreme track headers in the over yep. axle pipes yep, with your performance mm -hmm. software. Dude, I think it was what, like a 50, 60? It was like a 50, 60 horsepower gain. Horsepower gain, stock. and it was incredibly yeah. noticeable. So driving the Spider RS and then driving the GT4 RS, this thing is the exact same of that, but manual. Yeah, so in you a get, fraction of the price. Dude, too. you yeah. get all, and I'm not even being biased, I'm not even lying to yeah, you guys, yeah. I'm being, I work for the brand of Porsche, so I've driven Spider RSs, 4 RSs, and I can tell you right now, driving this with your performance software and the sole performance setup, dude, I'm telling you, it is, you get 4 RS, you get everything of a Spider and 4 RS, in a six-speed manual GT4 for yeah. the fraction of the price. It's incredible. Having a six-speed and getting all that power that the RS, the 4RS, and the Spider RS have at a PDK, yes, it shifts faster, but to be able to have that power within your grasp of second, third, fourth, from a driver's perspective, it is nothing but fun. 10 out of 10, I thought like, okay, the wow factor would go away, no. The wow factor doesn't go away. It's, it's still there every, every time, time you do yeah. a, Every time you do a pull, and sec again, second, third, fourth, that power it just hits, it goes all the way out, it just stretches the gear fully and you just feel it every, and I highly recommend it, 10 out of 10. It's perfect real. car, man, yeah. yeah, good stuff. We're super stoked on this project. Special thanks to John Giddos over at Soul uh, for this as well. So this has been an exciting week and uh, we look forward to you know, the next series we do. Uh, we are always pleasantly surprised at how efficient independent testing can go with these fellas and how much power they can pull out of software. So we are very excited to be working with them and continue working with them in the future. And thank you very much, Charles, yeah. for the time. Of course. Yeah, and, a great uh, week. Onwards and upwards to the next project. Yeah.